In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a break duct system for a Mazda MX-5 using forms and surfaces. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we are going to carry on with our Forms Mastery series, but we are going to be taking a look at using surfacing tools as well as Forms tools. This video kind of fits between both worlds and it could be done with surfaces or Forms or both. So I think it fits better with our Forms tools since that's where we would be spending most of our time. So I get a lot of requests from people, obviously, at the end of the videos. I always say, if you have questions, please ask. And I, I need to sort of cover a few things in this video. Uh, so I love getting requests, and I'm happy to help answer questions, and in some cases like this, do videos. And I will say that anytime you email me or send me a message, if you're asking for help learning how to do something, as long as I have the time, I am happy to help. If you email me or send me a message and just ask me to design something for you, the answer is almost always going to be no. Now, I'm happy to help people learn. I think that you should be able to get the knowledge to be able to, to design these parts and, and use the software how you need to for whatever your purpose is. But I am not in the business of just doing work for free. And as bad as that might sound, as many of you out there, if you do this uh, as a professional, you understand that designs take quite a long time. So for a design like this, Dan specifically sent me the scan of his race car and said I could share it, which is great. This means that you guys can go to the description and download the data set and follow along if you want. Uh, a lot of times I get scans and I can't share them, and that's completely understandable too because they take quite a bit of time uh, and, and money if you pay somebody to scan your car. Uh, so that is also very understandable, and I always appreciate anybody that's willing to share their data or at least let me show it on the screen and help other users out. Now, in the case of Dan, he has asked me not to design the part specifically. He wants to learn how to do it and get the skills to build his own parts. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about a couple of different ways that we can sort of meet the requirements of what Dan is doing. But at the end of this video, we're not going to have a complete part. I'm going to go through the process of doing this and talk about a couple different ways we can do it, some of the decisions, the reasons why we might go one way versus the other, and the overall goal of this part. With that out of the way, let's talk about what we're designing. So uh, Dan has, if you're here in the States, an NA Mazda Miata. This is the first gen MX-5, and he has a race car, a full-blown race car. Uh, so he's said that he's trying to design a duct system that will allow him to run a two and a half inch hose to the braking system. Uh, his car here is quite a bit wider than a stock car. It, like I said, it is a race car by all definition. So what we have here is on the left side, which is the passenger side for Dan, uh, there's going to be a blanking plate or a section of this that's just blanked off. And the section that's closer to the center of the vehicle is gonna to feed to a two and a half inch hose. Now, in this case, on that side, there is an electric water pump that's in the way. You can see some cables that go to some of the aero. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the design by building out that reference. Now on the driver's side, the right side for him, that is going to also have the same design that leads to the brake on the interior inboard side, but on the outside, it's gonna to lead to the air box. Uh, so the design is going to be somewhat symmetric, but the passenger side for him is going to be a little bit trickier to model. So we're going to talk about that, talk about the process, and kind of think about ways in which we can set up the constraints that we need. So when I was sort of looking at the pictures, the scan, kind of understanding what Dan wanted to do, I had to think about how I would do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple different ways now, I don't know that this really fits in the surface mastery series. I don't know that it really fits in the form mastery series, but it kind of is in between both. You could do these either way. At some level, you're always gonna have some surfacing to do. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about how to set this up with some surfaces. There are some things that we can do to build out surfaces of this geometry. And we're going to talk about how to do some of this with forms, because ultimately after the form design is done, it's a surface and then we need to work with it. So once again, it's not going to be a complete design, 
but it is going to have aspects of form tools as well as the surfacing tools. So to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a surface extrude. That is the two and a half inch cylinder where we're gonna attach the hose to. So I'm just gonna start a sketch. I'm gonna use C for circle, and I'm gonna create a circle that's 2.5 IN or 2.5 inches. Then I'm gonna just move it up into place. As I mentioned, the on this side of the car, there is an electric water pump. So I'm gonna just place it down here in this sort of quadrant. Now the right side of this is going to be blanked off and that is actually a really tricky thing to do. So we have to think about a couple ways to do that. Again, at the end of this, it's not gonna be a final design, but hopefully there'll be enough information there that you can create something. So I'm gonna finish the sketch and create an extrude off of this. I'm just gonna pull it back uh, maybe 40 millimeters and notice that it's just kind of floating out in space. Now, if I'm designing a part that is parametric in nature. If I was gonna design a plastic part to be molded, I wouldn't be sticking this thing out here in space. I would build some reference planes. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use move copy. So select the body and then use M on the keyboard or move copy. And I'm just gonna put it in place. So bring it back, maybe rotate it a little bit and give it some way to sort of feed that air and then attach to the hose that needs to go under that water pump. So once it's roughly in place, I'm gonna say okay. And now I've got that piece in place that I need to attach to. Now I know from Dan's emails and the conversations that he wants to carry the shape on the inboard side and just sort of blend it back in. And it wants to be epoxied or basically bonded to the bumper. So it's gonna be a, a 3D printed piece that gets attached to the bumper. So the tricky thing that we have to deal with here is the scan itself. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of detail here. We can get what we need, but there are some areas like right here where we've got some ridges or some bumps. Now, sometimes that happens if the, in this case, the bumper is shiny and then it's kind of matte in a certain area, or maybe there's irregularities to the actual part. Now, if you're talking about fiberglass, race car parts, uh, oftentimes they're not perfect. It just depends on uh, what you get. If you made it yourself, there might have been an irregularity in the mold or um, you know whatever the case might be. There are some issues on the scan that could cause us potential problems. So you can see here, there are some bumps and ridges. And if we go to stick a form body down to that, then what we're gonna end up with is we're gonna end up with some bumps. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I am going to start by showing you how to do some of this with surfaces. And in particular, we're gonna talk about mesh section sketches. And then we're gonna dive into doing some of it with forms. And then after the form, come back into the surface tools. So if you are only here to learn about the surface tools, we're gonna to do some mesh section sketches to make a surface. And then we're also going to come back after the fact and do some surfacing work. At least I think so. Again, this is, this is kind of my first time going through this, so we're kind of following along with me. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about mesh section sketches. So first thing I wanna do is create some planes. So I'm gonna start with this plane here, and I'm just gonna pull it over so I can show you what a mesh section sketch is and what it can do for us. So I'm gonna say, okay, right click to repeat that. This time I'm gonna take that top plane and I'm gonna pull it up and I'm just gonna put it sort of in the middle. And these are really just references here so we can see what this is. In our mesh tools, I'm gonna to create a mesh section sketch. I need to select the mesh body. I need to select the plane. And you can see the result here is the sketch that has the mesh section on it. I'm gonna repeat that. Same thing, select the body. I'm gonna select the plane we created. And then I'm gonna hide those construction planes. Now in my sketches folder, I now have two sketches which can be expanded because they have mesh sections in them. These mesh sections can be hidden. You can turn them on and off. But the big thing here is that we can go in, right click and edit the sketch. And once we have a mesh section, I'm gonna hide the bumper. Uh, we can go into create and fit curves to mesh sketch. So this section here allows us to pick a spline, for example, and we can pick the mesh section and we can add spline points here to define multiple smaller splines if we want. 
And what this allows us to do is it allows us to hide that mesh section. And now we have all of these individual splines here. Now, if we don't wanna use individual splines, oh, that was pretty messy. Let's go ahead and change the selection to window selection. Now, if you don't wanna use multiple splines, if you do a create or fit curves to mesh, sec mesh sketch section, what you can do is pick the start and the end and then allow it to build a spline that fits that. Now, there are some potential issues that you might see. So for example, if we take a look at the curvature combs, um, that looks a bit wild, right? So that, that doesn't look great. Um, and this is one of the inherent problems that we have with using mesh section sketches. So if we repeat that process and I do it over here, there is a spline fit tolerance. And this 0 0.01, we have to think about this in terms of the resolution of the mesh itself. So if we had, let's say, plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeters on the mesh itself, we say, okay, and we take a look at this, the tangency here, it's a little bit cleaner than it was for the last one where the tolerance was a bit tighter. I'm gonna do control Z to undo, and we're gonna do that again. So once again, I'm gonna go from here to here. Now, if we say take this spline fit tolerance to something a little bit larger, 0.5, or even if we go up even higher, let's say that we were doing a rapid scan and it's plus or minus a millimeter overall. We wanna allow it to have that deviation. So you can see here, the max curve deviation is 1.059 millimeters from the reference, from the sketch itself. So. Again, we can select that spline, we can look at the curvature combs, and it's starting to get better and better. So this is, a, you know, this is not a unique problem to doing this with a mesh section sketch. It's the same thing if we're using forms. If we're using forms and we're attaching to a mesh section sketch or a sketch that is based on something that's a bit noisy, then we always are going to have this potential problem. So let's repeat that process. I'm gonna do it on the side profile here. I'm gonna create a curve that fits the mesh section. I'm gonna select the start. I'm gonna to go to here. And sometimes I like to change these based on the curvature. Now you'll notice if we zoom in that there's a lot of, you know, sort of boxy sections. Every place we click, is going to create a new spline. And we can see the preview on the screen and you know we can add additional points and sort of determine what we want this to look like and fit. And I'm gonna to come to here, maybe add another one here and come all the way back to here, right click and say, okay. So now this was plus or minus a millimeter, right? Or not plus or minus, but the tolerance, the fit tolerance was a millimeter. So the end result, you can see that there's a little bit of a wiggle in the middle of this one, but the curvature is much better than it was when we had a really noisy scan and we were trying to match it to 0 0.01 millimeters. That tolerance is way too tight for a low or medium resolution mesh. So these are the things that we have to, to sort of deal with and think about if we're gonna be building surfaces off of data like this. Now, I know I mentioned we're gonna go over, we're gonna talk about mesh section sketches and, and sort of how we can do this. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create another offset plane. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna do that one over maybe right here. And then I'm gonna use that to create another mesh section. So this is the body once more, we're gonna say okay. And then we're gonna edit that. So once again, I don't really need to see the mesh anymore, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same thing, fit curves to mesh section, the same tolerance, and I'm gonna approximate the same click point locations. So what I'm trying to do is recreate what I did before. And you can see it gets a bit noisy at the back, and that does tend to happen, especially if you're creating a, a scan that's going into a, a dark area. In this case, it's the opening of the bumper. So now if we finish that sketch and we hide our mesh sections and we're just looking, uh, we're just looking strictly at the profiles, let's go ahead and hide this one as well. What we could do is we could create a lofted surface that goes between these. Uh, now where you're gonna run into issues potentially 
is going to be when you're not using splines that have curvature continuity as we go across. And anytime we add additional points, we're introducing some uncertainty in what the end surface is gonna look like. But if we say, okay, now you can see here, if we bring the bumper back, what we've essentially done is we've built out that little bit of that surface and it's a lot smoother than the underlying meshes. So if we go ahead and use control and four to hide the edges, we can see the mesh, we can see all of the bumps. Um, so I could tell that this was a relatively low resolution um, just based on the variation in the mesh itself. Um, again, not necessarily a problem. It doesn't mean that we can't get the data that we need, but this was a great way to build out the inside of that opening. Uh, another thing that we could do is we could build planes from front to back and sort of build out this opening as well. But you're probably starting to see that mesh section sketches are going to take a bit of planning and a bit of time to set up. Not that it's not possible and the end result can be extremely good. It can be very clean. But again, it just takes time. Now, if I were going to be designing this for Dan, if he came to me as a client and said, I need to make a duct system that fits here, it's going to be 3D printed, and I had this scan to work with. I mean, we're talking, you know, 40, 50 hours of time at minimum. It's, it's going to take a good bit of time to get a polished, finished part. Uh, now, if you're doing it yourself and you're printing it yourself and you can sand and make adjustments and do all these things, you can make some shortcuts. But doing it in a professional sense, you're really talking about a good bit of time investment. Okay, so now that we've covered some of the ways that we can do this with surfacing off of the mesh, let's talk about ways that we can do this with forms off of the mesh. Because ultimately we need a part that fits into this opening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start create form. I'm gonna start with the face tool and make sure that I have object snap turned on. Object snap will allow us to build out our design directly snapping to the mesh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm gonna come all the way over to this corner for the first face. And then I'm gonna start from the end of that one. I'm gonna go all the way up into this corner here. Now this is not going to be a final part by any means. because So you see when I just do two of those, the smooth display doesn't look anything like it, but the box display is, you know, relatively close. So if you're designing a part like this in forms, you really need to think about the least amount of input that you have to start building out the shape you want. If we get crazy and we try to make a part that exactly fits inside of here and then start transitioning it back to the shape, it's going to be a very difficult road because it's just going to have way too many edges to control. If you want to, you can build a single face and then you can select the edges. And looking from the front, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just extrude it across. And I'm gonna rotate this around, maybe move it back to approximately where it is, rotate it if we need to, move it in plane. And then once again, go to a front or back view and I'm gonna hold down Alt. I'm gonna extrude this down. I'm gonna say, okay. Now, once it's down here, we're going to use modify and we're going to weld the vertices together. So we start by picking the first one that we want to move and the one where we want it to go. And now we've essentially connected that opening shape. Now, once again, if I use Alt and 3 to go back to smooth, it doesn't look anything like the shape, but we're not quite there yet. We don't need it to match yet, but what we need to do is transition it back into here. Now, based on the fact that the front of the scan is fairly noisy, I want to avoid bringing my form body up, up forward because I'm never going to get it to match well enough, or at least, you know, well enough that I would think that it would be a good fit. Now, at this stage, we also need to think about that blinked section, the section that's going to be blocked off, and that, how difficult that is really going to be doing it with forms. So my suggestion is to build it completely open and then go back and blank it off with surfacing tools. So again, like I said, this is kind of a hybrid video where we're talking about forms tools and we're talking about surfacing tools. And it really just depends on, you know, which tool you're more comfortable with, how much time you wanna spend using it. 
But at this stage, what I wanna do is I'm gonna double click on this back edge. I'm gonna go back to edit form. And from my right hand side or left hand side, I'm gonna hold down alt and extrude this back. And then I'm just gonna rotate it. I'm gonna scale it a bit and sort of get it you know, relatively close to that cylinder. So from here, maybe scale it down, pull it over and say, okay. Now at this stage, obviously, if I go back to smooth display, it doesn't look anything like what we need, but that's not the point yet. Next, we're gonna take a look at some of our tools. We want to match. Now we have a pull tool, which allows us to take edges and, or take vertices and snap them to surfaces or mesh bodies. We're not ready for that yet. Uh, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the match tool on this back edge. So we'll double click it, and then we're gonna match the edge of our surface. Now, to get started, I wanna turn tolerance off because I don't want it to be able to add a ton of extra edges to my design, not yet. But I wanna take a look at the difference between tangent and curvature continuity. And for this, I'm gonna switch over to smooth display. So the tangency is going to take the input edge, in this case, of our cylinder, and it's just gonna simply say that the direction of curvature at that edge is going to be carried out. Now the curvature continuity is gonna be slightly different because it's gonna take the next edge in our design and it's gonna mimic this edge that we're matching and simply push it out in space. So it's, it's not only taking the direction of curvature, but it's also taking the weight of it. Now in this case, we have an extruded cylinder, so it's just gonna be straight. But for our design here, I wanna use that and I'm just gonna say, okay. Then I wanna double click this edge go to modify slide edge. And I just wanna bring it backwards a bit just to sort of soften it up. So double click the mouse to put it back in the center. And once again, it doesn't really match or look like the rest of the design yet. But once again, that's okay. We don't need it to just yet. Now with Fusion 360 forms, we have the ability to do uh, T points. We can have edges at the front and not have them carry all the way back. That is an option. I typically avoid those in designs because they have different problems downstream. Now that might be something that we do here, but at this point, I wanna go back to my box display and I wanna to start to add some new edge divisions so that I can start to build out what I want the shape to look like. So the first thing that I wanna do is work in the middle. So I'm gonna double click here, go to modify and insert edge, simple insertion right in the middle and say, okay. I'm gonna leave the edge at the back because I'm gonna allow match to take care of all this. But at the front, I wanna move this vertice into place. So from this view, I'm gonna to go to modify. I'm just gonna pull it up a bit closer to the mesh. Again, you can go to Alt and three and see how it's changing it in the smooth display. We're gonna say, okay. All right, so now we wanna repeat that on the bottom. So again, insert edge, double click the bottom, put it right in the middle. And for this one, I am, instead of just moving that front point, I'm gonna move the entire edge down just to get it a little bit closer. And once again, we're gonna leave the back because the match tool is gonna to sort of take care of that back edge and then we'll, we'll do some sort of massaging of it, okay. So next, we're gonna repeat that same process. This time we're gonna do it over here. I wish there was an insert edge that you could do during edit form. For this one, I'm gonna do minus 0.5, say okay. Since we're gonna to have to keep doing this, I'm just gonna repeat it over here, say okay, and then use edit form. So I'm gonna take this whole edge, pull it over, take this one, pull it over a bit. And what I'm trying to do is get the front or the opening section a little bit closer so if I had Alt and three, you can see we're starting to build out the shape and we're still keeping it fairly evenly spaced and relatively smooth. Now where we're gonna to start to run into issues is going to be the corners because we have to add more edges in the corners than we have in the larger flat spaces. So Alt and one to go back to box display. And there are a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, one of the ways I like to do this is to use the bevel tool. So bevel edge, I'm gonna double click this edge and by default, this is probably at 0.5. Uh, it, it remembers your settings. 0.1 is going to take this original edge. You can see the preview on the screen. It's gonna take this original edge. It's gonna move it over 0.1 in one direction and then add another edge 0.1 in the other. 
Now, the reason that this differs from inserting edge, so if we go to modify and insert edge and I double click that and I do just a 0.1, the reason that this is different is because it leaves the original edge where it is. So I'm gonna say, okay, so you can see this. Now, if we go to smooth display, it doesn't look too bad, but it leaves that original edge there. So if we do this with bevel edge, and I do that 0.1, and one edge again, or one segment is gonna move the, the current edge over and add another one to create that bevel. So what that does, if we take a look at it in smooth display, is it makes sure that those edges are surrounding that curvature. It gives us a better chance at actually building, you know, sort of a filleted corner there. Now you can add more edges with bevel, and I'll do this one in smooth display. Now you can add more edges with bevel. If I say add two, for example, the more we add, what ends up happening is all the ones interior to those are going to be flat. So that's actually a bad situation. That's not really what we want when we're trying to build these nice organic shaped forms. So I'm gonna stick with just adding one. I'm gonna do it over here, repeat bevel, same settings, and we'll do it here one more time. Right click, repeat bevel, and same settings. So once again, it's not perfect, but we're getting closer, right? So we're getting closer to that shape. Now, I did make a mistake, and this does tend to happen. Uh, I added those edges a bit too soon, right? I mentioned that we wanted to potentially blank off this area. Now, we could do it with surfaces, or we could do it now. You know, we could go back and we could undo what we've done. But there are always ways in which we can work around this. And if the end result is going to be done with forms on the other side, then, you know, we can go back at any point in time and, or I'm sorry, the end result is going to be done with surfaces that we can go back at any time and sort of trim out what we don't like and build out what we want. Now, if we were going to try to manipulate this now, what I would do is I would take this edge, I would insert another edge, and then I would double click it go to modify edit form, move my pivot point over here, and then scale down those edges. Now what scaling down those edges will allow me to do is maintain everything over here on the left-hand side and using that pivot point location allow us to bring the right-hand side over. Because we don't want these to be completely flat, I am gonna just nudge it back to the right a little bit. Now there are potential problems that happens with this and we'll go over that in just a second. But if we take a look at this in smooth display, that actually looks pretty good. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, Dan doesn't want me to design this for him, so I'm not too concerned about fitting with, you know, his final shape and criteria. I just want to give the, the tools that are needed here. So let's go back to box display. Let's hide the mesh and let's talk about how to fix some of the potential problems that we created for ourselves. So one thing I don't like is that this edge here makes a hard turn, and that's simply because it's keeping a consistent length edge here. While that's not always strictly required, uh, if we wanna fix this, we can use insert point and just come forward to where we want, hit enter, select that and hit delete. Now, taking a look at it in smooth display, control and four to hide the edges. Uh, everything looks pretty good. If you want to make some changes along the length of a form, so for example, if we like the tighter transition here, but we wanna gradually fade it out, we can do that using insert point as well. So we can keep the distance up here and then we can start to taper it away as we go back and then delete those. And we'll do the same thing. So again, insert point, we'll start here and sort of taper that as we go back and then get rid of those. So if we go to Alt and three, Control four, what we're doing is we've got a tighter transition here and it sort of spreads out as it goes back. Another thing that I would mention here is that the utilities and make uniform, what this will do is it's gonna take the, the spacing of the form edges and faces, and it's gonna try to normalize the difference between the box display, which we have here, and the smooth display. So in smooth display, you can see that these fillets or these corners are a lot tighter together. And in box display, they're farther apart. So if we say okay to this, you can see that it spread those out and it tried to make everything a bit more even consistent. Now that's okay, that's a good result. It actually looks pretty good for uh, this design. 
The next thing is that this transition, we need to go back. Now that we've got more edges, we need to go back and use the match tool again. Double click that edge, um, select the front edge of the cylinder. And once again, we're gonna use curvature continuity, which is gonna take that second edge and it's gonna push it forward. Now, if you don't like this result, but you wanna use curvature continuity, we can change the tangency weight to say 0.5 and it won't push it as far forward. Or we can go back to the design before this point and we can add an additional edge. That way it can't push everything forward. Once again, we're not using tolerance yet because that's gonna add additional edges. We're just gonna say, okay. So far so good. You can see that the transition that happens here ends up getting a little bit bunched. And you can see that we're, we're seeing a deviation here. Now that'll go away with the tolerance because it'll fit a bit better. But again, we can add more edges and more transitions, but the, the fewer number that we have, the better off you were gonna be. But now this brings us to the next point and that is gonna be fitting it to the bumper. Now, the main thing that we wanna do is we wanna get these vertices closer to the bumper and only the vertices are gonna be able to, to get pulled to the mesh. So we don't have anything in the corner yet. We don't have anything in this corner yet. Uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna try to move these edges and get them a little bit closer without drastically changing the shape. So in order to do this, I'm gonna turn on soft modification. I'm gonna reduce this distance value to say 75. So what this is gonna do is anything that's colored red, let's move this out of the way, anything that's red, is gonna be affected more. Anything that's pink and white is gonna be affected less. And anything that's not highlighted is not gonna be affected at all. It'll stay where it is. So I wanna make sure that I'm not moving that back edge, but I am gradually adjusting the shape. And that'll move with our selection. So we're gonna move this over. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I wanna pull it over into that corner a little bit. Don't worry too much if it overlaps the mesh at this point, I'm, I'm okay with that. We're gonna do it down here. So again, just sort of pull it down. We're gonna pull that over. Same thing over here. Now, soft modification isn't strictly required here, but it does help us, especially if we're happy with the shape that we've, uh, that we've created. Now that we're a bit closer, uh, the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna turn soft modification off. I'm gonna take this front edge and I wanna extrude it out a little bit or I can insert another edge and divide it up just to give me a little bit more surface area. So holding down Alt, I'm gonna pull that forward just a little bit and then take a look at the results. All right, before we go too far, we can see that that created somewhat of a roll or a lip at the front. That's probably not ideal and it's based on the geometry that we had to work with here. Uh, so that, I'm gonna leave that for now and I'm gonna let attaching it to the mesh sort of handle it. But if you do notice that, you can go to your selection filter and turn on just the vertex selection. And this is gonna open up tangency handles. It might be kind of hard to see in this example, but this red handle here is a tangency handle. And we can actually change the tangency influence that happens. As soon as we move that, if we select this link tangency handle, sometimes it'll um, reset it and normalize it. So this one over here, uh, the tangency handle is relatively close, but once again, we can move that around and we can change the tangency direction. I don't generally like doing this. I don't think it's a great way to, to model complex parts like this, uh, but it is possible. So if you do run into an issue like that, it is something that you can do to kind of help this out. So find, uh, find the end of the tangency handle and let's see, move it that way. And we're just gonna run with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be okay with that. I'm not perfect, not ideal, but we're gonna, we're gonna allow it. Now I wanna add some intermediate edges. Uh, notice that I'm working in smooth display now. At this point, I don't really need to go back to box display just yet, but I'm gonna insert an edge 50% in the corner. I don't really care what it looks like at this point. I'm just gonna go ahead and insert edges in each corner. It's gonna tighten them up a little bit, but the main thing it's gonna do for me is it's gonna give me an extra point that I can push out to the mesh. Now, here's the next bit of this that we wanna make sure that we do. I'm gonna double click this edge, hold down shift and double click this edge, bring the bumper back, and then we're gonna to go to pull. Now, double clicking those edges automatically selects all the vertices on it 
and it's going to automatically pull it out to the mesh body. Now, one thing you're going to notice that happens here is because of that tangency at the front, it's really messing with the rest of the geometry. Now, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to double click that front edge and delete it. Double click this edge, go back to pull, and see if we have a better result without that extra geometry. And what I'm looking for at this stage, I'm not going to OK this, but what I'm looking for at this stage is to see where I'm not matching the geometry and where I might need to add additional edges. So you can see on this left side, I probably need another point here. I probably need another point here. I probably need one at least here. And the rest of it actually looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the rest of it, maybe here, but I'm, I'm OK with that. So we want to divide this side up, divide this side up, and then that one here. So cancel, double click here. Again, we're going to insert edge. It's going to be 0.5 in the positive direction for me. Sometimes uh, your, yours might be flipped. Right click and repeat the process. Uh, so we're going to insert an edge here. Because we're going on both sides, I can just do both. Say OK. And before I go any further, I want to go back to the box display. And I want to make some adjustments to this geometry. So I'm going to manually pull that entire edge over a little bit. Uh, let's make sure that we're on our multi selection to make sure that we're grabbing entire edges. I'm going to pull this one. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to avoid a perfectly straight line anywhere. So uh, this edge should be out just a little bit more than these. And we want to really see a gradual transition without um, a sort of a straight section there. Same thing up here. I'll take this and sort of push it up just a little bit. And I think that'll probably be an okay result. Go back to smooth display. And it looks okay. Again, don't worry too much about this. We're going to fix that in just a minute. Now we're at the stage where we're going to try to attach it or get it to match the bumper. So again, double click that front, go to pull, allow it to automatically pull. Now you can see we're fitting a bit better here. There's a bit of noise here in the scan. Um, obviously, if this is getting bonded into the bumper, some of that back stuff can be trimmed away if needed. But uh, everything looks, looks pretty good. That corner looks OK. Um, yeah, so everything looks pretty good. I'm going to hit Cancel because I'm not quite done making minor tweaks. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these corners are not, again, perfectly flat. Because I used Insert Edge and not Bevel, I need to go back and I need to make sure that I do at least have some transition there. And you can see that we've got sort of pinch that happens in the middle on both of these. So I'm going to use insert point to fix that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to come from here and I'm going to sort of bring this back. I'm going to repeat that here and sort of widen it out. And I'm going to take this edge and delete it. And I'll do the same thing here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to normalize that section. I'm going to have to do a little bit of work there, but I'm trying to, to sort of fix those areas. So once again, we're going to go to Modify, Insert Point, and I'm just going to bring this one down, get rid of that, Modify, Insert Point, go from here to here, and get rid of that. Uh, so we need to do a little bit of cleanup here. Once again, we don't want to see anything that's completely flat. Uh, so in box display, you just need to make some minor adjustments here. Uh, same thing over here. Once again, match is going to take care of this in the end. But at this stage, it is having some effect on the rest of the geometry. So we do want to make sure we at least clean that up a little bit. We can also go back to utilities and make uniform and allow it to sort of um, stretch some of those areas out and smooth them out a bit as well. All right, so now we're relatively close. I know the front is gonna be okay. I'm gonna go back to the match tool. I'm gonna double click this back edge, double click the cylinder. Again, use curvature continuity and take a look at the results. So everything's looking OK. This edge here, I'm not really too happy with, but that's OK. I can always go in and try to use some other tools that I have at my disposal, like Cylindrify. So we can select faces. And what it'll do is it'll automatically try to Cylindrify them. 
We don't really have enough divisions here to make that work for this tool. Another thing that we can do is we can take this back edge now that it's closer to the cylinder. We can insert an edge. And again, it's gonna to try to average these. So I'm gonna put it relatively um, close to the middle. I'm gonna delete this one. And I'm gonna repeat that process. This time I'm gonna take this front one. I'm not gonna do both, we'll do single and bring it back and get rid of the intermediate one. And just a couple extra steps to, to sort of give it a chance to smooth that section out. Now that we're close, again, let's double click this, go back to pull. Uh, we need to have the bumper on, it, or visible at least. And now I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna allow that. And that looks like a, a pretty decent fit. It's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty good. You could, again, spend more time adding additional edges and allowing it to, to give you a bit more surface area, but that's the overall process. Once we're, we're happy with the shape and the transition and everything, uh, at the very end, I would go back to match, go here, grab the edge of the cylinder, but this time I'm gonna turn on tolerance. And the edge tolerance here is gonna add additional T points on the edge, or po potentially it's gonna add additional edges. Once again, make sure that we have curvature continuity. And as soon as we turn on curvature continuity, you can see now it's adding additional edges there. I am gonna reduce this back down to 0.5, so it doesn't have too much of an influence on the overall shape. And we're gonna say, okay. Um, I should note that inside of that tool, I've covered it before, but there's the associative option that will link it permanently to the cylinder, which means if we change the diameter of that and come back to the forms, it'll automatically update. And it will put an associative match tool inside of the browser here that we can edit the tolerance and, and stuff like that. Now, I'm pretty much done with this, so I'm gonna say finish form. I'm gonna hide the bumper for now. Uh, and you can see that now we could stitch these two together. So we can potentially say, stitch those together. And now I have one surface that has that smooth transition that fits you know, relatively well inside the bumper, potentially some overlap here. Again, we could add more edges, but the more edges that you add, the harder the shape becomes to control. But this does point back and down, so it should be able to clear that water pump. We could spend a little bit more time adding more detail here. We could potentially do some mesh section sketches and build out uh, you know, the rest of the bumper and then maybe loft between them smoothly if we need to. But I think that this is a pretty good result given the, uh, you know, given the input with the mesh that we have to work with and the geometry we're trying to achieve. I think that's a pretty good result. Now, I did mention that we were gonna talk about some surface tools and we've already done a few, right? We did mesh section, we made the initial extrude, but I don't really count that. Uh, so now if we wanted to, let's say, open this up with surface tools, we could do it with, uh, any number of tools that we potentially want. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that might work. I'm gonna hide the bumper because it just kind of complicates things. And what I wanna do is I want to take a look at creating some additional offset planes. So I'm gonna start with this one here. It's not visible, so it's gonna toss up a warning. But what I wanna do is I wanna create a plane where I have a start. I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna go from this plane to here, and we're gonna repeat that one more time. Just bring it back. And what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to build out basically loft cross sections. So I'm gonna hide all those original planes and I'm gonna start this plane and create a sketch. Let's go ahead. Uh, I don't know why they come in so small like that, but for some reason they do. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, maybe we wanna start with an ellipse. So I'm just gonna put an ellipse about where I want the opening to be for, uh, you know, say the air box. I'm gonna finish the sketch. It automatically is gonna hide that plane for me, which is pretty nice. Then I'm gonna create a sketch on the next plane back. If we want to, we can take that center point and we can project it, project include. And then we can build, let's say maybe a circle. Uh, we're gonna be sort of necking down a little bit. I'm gonna finish the sketch and we'll start on that last plane. And the last one, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create another circle, but this time 
I'm gonna make it bigger. And that last circle, I actually want to extrude back a little bit. So instead of using a, a sketch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that cylinder. So I'm gonna to go to move, copy, move. And since it's gonna be going to the air box, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point that up a little bit and say, okay. So now we can create a loft going between this profile, this profile, and that edge. And with that edge, what we can say is curvature, continuity, or tangency. With the front profile, we can say direction, which is gonna be based, uh, specifically, it's gonna be based off of, um, in this case, the, the sketch plane, the offset plane that we had. It's just normal to that. And we can say, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch these together and then do a little bit of trimming. Before I do the trimming though, I'm gonna copy this body, just Control C, Control V. So that way I leave the original intact in case I wanna mirror it to the other side or something or, or keep it here. And then we're gonna do a trim. So the first trim, I'm gonna get rid of this front piece. Um, second, I'm gonna use that as my trim tool, get rid of the inside. I'm gonna stitch those two together. And because we have an edge here, we can actually try to fill it or blend those together if we want. We can also take a step back, so Control C to before we trimmed, and we can move that entire body. So if you wanna play around with the location of this or the size of it, you can scale it. But uh, you know, let's say that maybe we wanted to, to move it up, maybe rotate it a little bit, and just kind of decide where it needs to go. If we wanted that opening to be a little bit bigger, we can pull it back just a bit further. And now we can um, trim it. So trim tool, get rid of that little piece, uh, repeat. Now it's our trim tool, get rid of that inside piece and stitch them together. And once again, we can add a fillet. We could also do, um, we can also do a blend. You know, we can loft between them if we want to. So that, you know, that looks pretty good, but I don't really like the way that transitions. So I'm gonna delete the stitch and then I'm gonna do another sketch from the front. So the reason I wanna do another sketch from the front is now I am going to just create a spline to sort of get the shape that I'm looking for, go back to itself. So it's automatically gonna have tangency. And I'm gonna use this as a trim tool. It could be a split body. Um, either one is fine. I want to get rid of that section there. Hide the sketch. Maybe move this body back just a little bit. And then loft between them. So now we're going from here to here. We'll do a tangency on both. And stitch those together. It's a little bit better than a fillet. Let's go ahead and double click to bring that back. Control four to hide the edges and bring the bumper back. So now we've got this area where it's going down and ducting below that electric water pump. Um, we got this side here that is going up into the air box. Now, obviously you could spend as much time as you want playing around with these shapes, but getting the true organic shape like that, the forms tools are obviously much quicker and much easier. If you want to take some time and build out very specific features like a true ridge or divider between those two, um, that can just be an extruded surface. And then you can use that to sort of blend and open up the other areas. Again, these were just kind of examples, not necessarily meeting the mark exactly what Dan is trying to do but hopefully it gives you enough uh, information and ideas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mesh body. Uh, it's not gonna let me mirror the mesh body, but I'm gonna take this and mirror that to the other side. I'm gonna use a new body as the option and just move it. And then bring back this one. So again, on one side, we've got just the brake duct. On the other side, we've got the brake duct and then feeding up to the air box with some sort of um, opening or shape. So hopefully, you know, hopefully that was helpful. Obviously these videos tend to run long because that's the amount of time it takes to sort of explore the process. 
there's not gonna be a definite formula that says you should model this with surfaces or you should use forms. What I typically do is I look at the complexity of the input, in this case, the bumper. For me, it was much easier to start with forms, a very simple form in box display, build out the shape I wanted and gradually add more detail until I had enough that I could match the shape of the bumper. And then I could go and use things like surface tools to build out additional features. There is always going to be a trade-off a balance that happens, but creating mesh section sketches is a great way to build out geometry. But there are certain things like the transition here that would just be tricky. You'd have to build a lot of planes, build a lot of splines, and it ultimately is gonna come down to, again, the quality of the mesh, the, the accuracy of the mesh. And we can make some of those decisions with the forms as long as we keep the number of divisions and edge, edges relatively low. We don't have to worry too much about micro variations in the underlying triangles because we're only attaching at a couple points. Uh, so always keep that stuff in mind. But if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.